Hello, so in that last video, um, we saw how we can modify our Flask application in order to get um, a bunch of uh, training data, basically. And so the thing I want to do now is I want to use that training data to train some models. Um, I'm using models in the plural because I want to have one classifier for each um, ad, and I want the classifier to tell me what is the probability that somebody would uh, click this ad if they were shown it. And so we have three different kinds of ads, and that's where I have three different models. And so I'm over here in my Jupyter Notebook again, and I've already imported um, a few different things. I may have a pipeline model uh, where I may have polynomial features followed by standard scalar, followed by my actual estimator at the end. Um, I experimented with different things to, uh, to kind of find a good model for this example. I'm not going to be experimenting with it as part of this video because we've done that kind of thing uh, before, and it's not really the focus of this example. So what am I trying to try to do? I'm going to try to have some models like this, a dictionary of them, where the key is an ad name. And then the value is going to be the sklearn model, just like that. And so maybe I'll just do one at a time. I'm going to just say add, um, add name. Oops. Can't type. I'll do one for wine first. And remember that when I have all this train data, um, it's for all kinds of different ads. And so I may want to filter it down just to the ones, to the kind of the data relevant to uh, predicting for wine. And so I do that and I see, okay, there's just a bunch of wine data and I can see for each um, each time somebody was shown a wine ad, while well, some of them clicked uh, and some of them did not. And I want to try to predict that based on, on the income, mean and income median. I may call this my train uh, subset right here. And um, and then I think the other thing I want to do is I want to figure out, well, what are the X columns I'm going to be dealing with? I'm going to be dealing with income, mean, and also income, median, just like that. And maybe I could also even just say my Y column is going to be whether or not you collect, right? And, and so at that point, what am I going to do? I'm going to say a model equals uh, something. And then at the end, I can say model.fit and I'm gonna be using this data, right? So I wanna have my X and my Y here. And how do I do that? Well, for here, I can just pull out that Y column. And for here, I can pull out a subset of columns that I can use, right? So this is what I'm working towards. And then this model here, I could try lots of different models. Um, that's not really the interesting part of this demo. I'm just gonna use that pipeline model. And remember, the pipeline is a list of, um, is a list of, of steps. And uh, each of those steps has a name. And then uh, I might have a transformer after that. Um, or sometimes I'm going to have uh, an estimator. I guess at the end it has to be an estimator because even after I've done all these transformations to the data, at the end I have to estimate. At the end I have to estimate. Well, will they click it or will they not? OK, so my three steps are going to be um, a standard I'm sorry, I may want to do polynomial features first, and I'm going to do standard scaling, and then finally at the end I'm going to do a logistic regression. All right, so I'm going to say polynomial features. Let's just say three for now. Uh, here I'm going to do standard scaling, and then finally at the end I'm going to have my logistic regression. Just like that. So let me just try running this and see if it works. It seems to work fine, uh, which is great. So I have my model here, and um, and uh, what I'd like to do now is I'd actually like to uh, put it in this dictionary, right? So I'm going to say, at the very end, models of add name. Remember that add name is the key, and the value is the sklearn model. So this will be my pipeline I just created, right? We'll go in there. And so when I'm all done, I can take a look at this. All right, so I have a dictionary where wine, I want to predict whether somebody looks at, at wine. Well, this is the model I should use. And so at this point, then I can um, kind of change this, right? I see that here's where I'm actually uh, kind of doing one particular thing. So I want to put that all in one loop. So I'm going to say something like for add name, and um, uh, I, I guess how what could I do? I could, if I wanted to, I could say like, well, I want to have the set of maybe I'll just look at every ad, right? So that'll give me all of them. This is maybe the most general way to do it. And then all of these things like that. We'll give me a three different model. So, okay, great. Here's my coffee model. And where's my other ones? Um, 
Uh, it's kind of indented weird. Here's my soda model. Here's my wine model. All right, so I have three different models here, all in this big um, in this big dictionary. Okay, now there's some things I want to do. I want to figure out um, for a given user how likely are they to um, how likely is a given user to click on a particular ad. Okay, so let me head down here and I want to say uh, I'm going to say click probability. And so for my user, let's say I know what zip code they're in and I know what ad I'm showing them. Okay, I want to say what is the probability they will click on it. All right, so I, I want to figure out how to do that. And so how, how, how will I approach that? Let me say I'm just going to do wine first. If I want to, I can do um, predictions here. I can say predict and I need to pass in um, some sort of data frame, right, with the features that I need. And so what are the features I need? The features are these things, those X columns, right? And it turns out those things just come straight out of this income. Um, is it incomes, maybe, that I had earlier? There we go. It comes straight out of these incomes. I have those two things. And let me just shorten this up a little bit here. So if I want, I could grab some subset of these and then do a prediction based on that, right? So how would I grab a subset of them? I could say dot uh, location, and then I could put in here, um, I could put in a list of them if I want. I could say like 53001, 53003. That would give me these things. This is exactly the data I used for my features before. So I could do that and I could say, well, okay, I guess those two zip codes, the prediction is, uh, false, the person would not uh, not buy it. In general, I'm just trying to be wanting to do a prediction for one particular uh, zip code at a time. And so I can do that. But what I'm really interested in is like, let's say I have my three models and all the models say, um, you know, I don't think the person is trying to click on this uh, ad. I still have to show them an ad, right? So even if all the models say probably not, I want to say, well, which one thinks it's more likely? So instead of predict, I really want predict prob ability A. And so what does this mean? This means that there's a 75% chance they do not click and a 24% chance they do. If I want to, I can I can pull that out. I can say 0, 1, and I can say, okay, um, for somebody in this zip code, there's a 24% chance they'll click on a model called wine. And so since we kind of derived that weird piece of code, we can use it up here now, right? So I want to say in general, right, I can put my zip code here. And then over here, I can say, well, what ad name are we doing? Right, so what can I do down here? I can say, what is the click probability? Um, I'll use the same zip code again. And I'll say that zip code, and I want to know for one. Maybe I'm just going to print a few of these things like this, so I can see what's happening here. And so I'm going to do that, I'll do that again. And uh, what were the other ones? I think it was like soda, coffee, and wine. And so I can see, even though they weren't very likely to click wine, only a 24% chance, that's our best bet. Coffee is a little bit worse, and it's very unlikely they're going to click soda. So, so what I'd really like to do is I'd like to have some sort of function that loops over these three things and then tells me um, what ad is the best ad, right? So I'm going to say something like this. I'm going to say something like um, get best ad and for somebody in a particular zip code. And for now, maybe I'll just hard code this. I'm going to say, because I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to write this so that I can use it in the next demo. And I'm just thinking about what variables I'll have there. So maybe eventually I get rid of the hard coding. But for now, I'm going to hard code. And I'm going to say uh, for uh, ad name and these three things. I have the soda, the coffee, and the wine, right? I have those three. And then for each of them, I can say, well, what is the probability, right? So I can say best probability, right? I'm just sorry, I'm gonna say probability equals this for this zip code and this ad. All right, so I can do that. And, uh, Right, so I'm gonna be looping over and computing the probability for each of them using each model in this big dictionary, basically, right? Because this calls this up here. 
and I want to see, well, is it the highest probability? So I'm going to start with something like this. I'm going to say, like, best probability is zero. Um, and if you can beat that, so if probability is better than best probability, guess what? Now my new best probability is the one I just saw, and my best add is the add name I just saw, which I'll return at the end. All right, so I'm going to do that. Let's test this. I'm hoping it's going to recommend wine. So I'm going to say get best add for somebody in 53001. And very good, it says that we should show them wine. I wonder if I do some other ones. I guess a lot of wine. Oh, that, that area of coffee is better. There's another wine. It seems like wine is pretty popular. But for each area, it will tell me what, uh, what kind of, of these three ads is most likely. And so I'm in pretty good shape here, right? So I have my dictionary of my three models. I have some functions that can use those models. The thing I'm going to leave for the next video is how do I get these models and this code back into my Flask application so I can start making uh, smarter decisions.